Okay, welcome everyone and thanks for joining for this session. I think this is a really important topic to talk about. My name is Janne Koporan, I work at Wunder as a lead architect. And that's my work. I see a lot of projects, a lot of like list of all these requirements for those projects. And there are always those comments like performance, accessibility, that kind of stuff. But I have never seen a project on RFP where it is mentioned that the site should be sustainable. And that's something that I try to, whenever I have say on those things, I try to introduce that, hey, let's also make this site sustainable. As you can see, I don't have slides. When I started to write this presentation, I write down a sentence that you should always think critically, do you really need this piece of technology? And that's kind of a good example of actually doing that. I thought that I don't necessarily need slides for this session, so we can save just a little bit of energy by not keeping the display on for this, this session. So that's kind of the idea of green tech thinking, always thinking that if there is something that we can actually turn off, leave out, then having a critical think of those, those small things so we can make everything a bit more sustainable. Especially in the web development, there is a lot of things that we can, we just have used to put those in and, and have them there without thinking more should they be there or not. Because web is quite big nowadays and we need to do those small things. We already do a lot of small things in our personal lives. We recycle, we opt for uh, public transportation or like bikes. You see a lot of bikes here instead of owning a car or opting for a car. And for example, I think many of us fly here how many of you compensate your flights? Hands up. A few. And how many of you compensate your internet users? Why not? Because an average internet user contributes as much, as much to the environmental CO2 emissions as one intercontinental flight. So it's of course, it's over the year, and one flight is easier. It's, it's one single action that you do. But over the year, you contribute as much with those small actions that you do around the internet. So there is a chance to contribute on that, compensate that as well. As we compare these two industries, it was already in 2017 that the internet was actually as big as the whole aviation industry contributing to the global warming and, and CO2 emissions and everything like that. And ever since it has been growing, so it has already surpassed the aviation industry. So it's it's a big player in that field. And it's it keeps growing. It keeps growing because we put more services. There is Those services uh, provide more content. And then, of course, there is a lot of new users coming in. There is a talk about next billion users. Of course, those next billion users will enter in the low end of the usage, so they are not contributing that much. But there is actually currently 3.5 billion users on the internet. And only 10% of those users contribute over almost all of that, what the internet is consuming. And the next billion that we need to be worried about is the next billion power users, because that will quadruple the effect of the internet. It's estimated that that will happen somewhere in next decade. As I said, we can do small things personally, but that's not why I'm here, because in this room, in this conference, we are the people building that internet. So we can have a lot more impact, building services that are sustainable, and then the users, they are not contributing that much. For example, a website with 10,000 monthly page views, once again, contributes as much as one intercontinental flight throughout a year. So, let's say we in this room has put websites with 
hundreds of millions of monthly page views, maybe even more. If we can just optimize that amount, just 10 percent, for example, a small amount, but that's quite many flights already. So we can do that kind of things, spread the world, try to do those services that we put on a sustainable basis. As I don't have slides, I have my notes here in, of course, recycled paper. Okay. So how we can improve our websites, how we can make them more sustainable. There are many ways, but let's first talk about where that energy usage goes. So of course there is first there is the servers, data centers, the data needs to be provided from somewhere. Then there is the data transfer, it needs to be transferred, it doesn't just move from place to place. There is all kind of rotors and network devices in between that consume electricity. And then there are the end user devices that are using electricity to display that information. So first we can start from the servers, making sure that we are using just the amount of resources that we actually need, not reserving huge servers and then just run them on 5%, 10% utilization. So matching the resources to the actual usage for example, by using auto scaling, even serverless technologies or something like that. And of course, we can also optimize the code so it runs with lower resources. The network, of course, the transfer is directly tied to the amount of data transferred. So if we make smaller websites, smaller pages that needs less transfer, then we can, of course, save, save that bandwidth and, and some electricity. And of course, caching in that is really important if we can cache it closer to the user, for example, using CDN or something like that, or even end user like browser caching and something like that. So less less data is, is transferred. And of course, optimizing it here is this good, good place to optimize the page, like not bundling everything, all the JavaScript and CSS on every page, but just bundling that, um, at that code that is actually required for that page. And then there is the end user appliances, of course, making lighter websites that render easily on the, on the device. It's, it's a good way to save on that, that end. And there is, of course, if the sites are growing bigger, but also more complex, it, more, it requires more power from the devices and that leads to the cycle that you need to buy new devices every year or every three year or anything like that. So if they are working on the lower end devices, they are working longer on the older devices that save some, some energy as well. But it's not all about the technology. There is other ways that you can use, uh, also make your site sustainable. Because there is the design. You can design the website, use less images, smaller images, darker colors that consume less power on the screen. And then there is the usability. I think we have at some point got into the wrong track, measuring our website performance by page views or time spent on the page. But it should be that user comes in, spends as little as possible, as, as little as possible time or page views on the site. So it needs to be usable so that the uh, information is easily available and findable. So they don't have to click around. And at least also to the search engine optimization if the user finds their results directly to your site, to the actual page, of course that helps that they don't, again, have to browse around the site. Because Google has become basically our interface to the internet. And the Google searches made take 23, 23 trees the whole year to compensate all that energy used for one, uh, all those searches made in every single second. That's lots of lots of trees. So there are ways that we can do it in every single area of our development, our well making those websites. It's 
not just technical, it needs to be throughout the organization, throughout our mindset, making those small changes, small decisions everywhere that we see that, okay, this is probably not necessary. Maybe we can do it a bit lighter. And, well, I said that we here already can contribute quite a lot. We are in the Drupal con community, is big. And Chris said that one in 40 pages, uh, sites is made in Drupal. So if we can make Drupal be more green, it's a lot more impact already than any of us can do alone. And then we can show an example to other, era, other actors in this industry making the whole internet more green. Thank you. And we have time for questions. Plenty. How many of you are using renewable hosting energy? Uh, most of us have used renewable energy. <coughs> Not too many. Yeah. Do you have any recommendations? Yeah, the renewable energy is, is quite interesting topic and of course it makes your website more green in overall, but the problem with the clean energy overall is that even if we do take good run hold internet with renewable energy, it's away from other industries. It's basically a zero sum game. It doesn't just appear from somewhere. And the other problem with that is that internet is actually growing faster than the adoption of the clean energy sources. So someday, even if we put all the renewable energy in internet, it won't be enough unless we stop or slow the growth of the internet or the consumption of the internet. I see it just as a small uh, part. Of the, um, yeah, of course, it's it's part of it. Where did you find the data on, on those different measures? Well, it's actually quite hot topic around, so it's easy to find. I can remember that I can send you the list of links, and I think I will write a blog post or something like that because I didn't have fly, slide to share, so I can I can include those those statistics. But there's those all the energy research and and that kind of stuff. But it was kind of hard because there was different numbers, like there are numbers for the North America only and that kind of stuff, but of course the energy distribution by the sources are different in different countries, but of course it's well, internet is global, so even if you have those data centers somewhere running on the green energy, then there's all the data transfer and the energy appliances using different sources of energy. But for example, the website size and that kind of stuff that I used for the background data is from the Internet Archive that they have for example cool, cool statistics of the average website and average web usage, that kind of stuff. Could you share this on Drupal.org as well? Yeah, of course. All right. I could I could do that. Yeah. Yeah, actually. So the saw the topic, but didn't have time to read it through before that. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly.
Okay. Thank you.